Right, so it was announced early Monday morning that the mob bosses of 11 of the biggest football clubs in the world and Tottenham Hotspur announced they were going to Thanos snap football and break away from UEFA and possibly their domestic competitions to form their own Super League. This naturally sparked unprecedented levels of games goneness with pundits, players, journalists and of course fans displaying their outrage as something that was a genuine threat to the future of the sport. Later that day, Chelsea supporters group called We Are The Shed toppled fans to reach for their bedsheets, cardboards and printer paper and head down to Stamford Bridge in a large ditch attempt to save football. And being the opportunistic, view hungry YouTuber that I am, I quite simply could not miss this. Also, um, I wanted to help fight against Super League, obviously. That was definitely my main intention going to this thing. Before I get into the, I'm going to say vlog for lack of a better word, I'm just going to establish these things. This isn't the content I set out to make. I'm the sort of person who likes to sit on the fence and shy away from the big issues. However, considering my regular content is clearly fucking tanking, I thought I'd make a video on this just to try something else. And if you're a fan of the 90 second Chelsea review series, hey, don't laugh, someone out there might actually enjoy them then the reason there isn't one for the Brighton game is because I didn't watch it because I went to this thing instead. Also, I was not as outraged as other people about the Super League. It was obviously a disgusting corporatist move that threatened to rip the working class game away from the people and communities that built it up and made it what it is. But there's something about watching Sky Sports, UEFA, FIFA, the Premier League and all these people and organisations who have repeatedly bastardised something that is, in all seriousness, is my only true passion in life. Squirm and be told to do one was immensely satisfying even if a greater evil was to grow out of it. Also, as someone who loves a troll, Florentino Perez's statement about young people not liking football was very amusing to me. Him just to generalise an entire group of people based on absolutely zero evidence and give his justification behind this thing was just spectacular. The brass neck of that bloke is absolutely staggering and the kind of thing you have to laugh about or else you cry. And lastly, this is the first protest I've ever been to. I'm fully aware that I've been plenty more meaningful reasons to stand outside and agree with people in recent years. But at the end of the day, this is an issue that directly impacted something that is very important to me. And while it pales in insignificance compared to real world issues, I can't pretend what I do and don't feel passionate enough to protest about. So yeah, that's why I went to this one and gave the other ones a miss. Anyway, let's get into the day that Chelsea fans save football. Met up with my mates at the station. Not got photos of that happening, but they do exist, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Down some anger juice on the train and arrived at Stamford Bridge. The last home game I went to was in January 2020, and if you had told me then that I wouldn't be back for over a year and it'd be to try and stop the end of the club as we know it, I'd have said you were mental because you would have been. That would have been an absolutely ridiculous thing to say during a 2-2 draw with Arsenal. By the time we got there, the bed sheets and cardboards were out and a large crowd was forming outside the ground. I also realised at this point I was about five yards from the legends that are Thogden and Thogdad, so I made it my mission at this point to get them on the video, but we'll get to that later. People began singing Fuck the Super League to the tune of the chant we had for Antonio Conte and we had for Jorginho and when we were posing VAR and when we are top of the league. Seriously Chelsea fans, come on, I love you, but let's try and be a bit more creative. There's also a chance of, we want our Chelsea back, and Perez, Perez, you're a cunt. I can only assume they meant Florentino, not Iose. But if this was some rogue way of getting in his head before the cup final, I'm massively on board with it. It was around this time Czech came out and spoke to the fans. I got clipped on the back of the head by Celery at this point, and was therefore slightly concerned for Big Pete. He's not got the firmness of skulls, and was worried a stray lump of Celery could potentially prove fatal. Then, after months of arguing and outrage from Yadars, football fans finally came together and took a knee. I bloody love it, personally. I love it. <laughs> football is fantastic. Now, if you watched that and thought I wasn't really taking it seriously, well, I'll level with you. I wasn't. At this point, I was considering what the point was. We were never going to win. Seriously, what could a bunch of football fans with some, quite frankly, terrible handmade signs shouting at nobody on a Tuesday afternoon going to do to change the mind of real-life Bond villains? I was honestly just there to have a drink, enjoy the day out, and almost say goodbye to an enormous part of my life. So we went to stock up on beer in an absolutely rammed corner shop, Honestly, Village Store, that was the name of the corner shop, won the lottery, made an absolute killing that day, fair play to them. While we're in the shop, the protests moved round to near the Britannia Gate. As we walked towards the crowd, I was considering calling it a day, and then this happened. <laughs>
happened? What's happened? Chelsea are withdrawing. Chelsea are withdrawing. Yeah. We won. We won. <laughs> I say we won. Yes. I'm, I'm stunned. I'm brilliant. We'd done it. We'd actually done it. Chelsea were pulling out the Super League. It actually worked. Incredible. I felt like a right prick forever down in the power of football fans. The bad guys win quite often in football, and the game has been moving further and further away from its roots for years, and will probably continue to do so. But this, this is something they'll never beat. I've long been sceptical about the idea that football is nothing without fans, but this has proven it to be true. You can change our rules, raise our ticket prices, you can change fixtures to drag us to Newcastle on a Monday night, but the pride, passion, love, the heart and soul of our clubs will forever belong to supporters. As Chelsea fans, we don't always cover ourselves in glory. We're not AFC Wimbledon or St Pauli or Dortmund or any of these clubs who are much more hashtag AMF than us, but when it really matters, when the biggest issues are at stake, we stand up to be counted. And what we, or they, I didn't do that much if I'm honest, have achieved in toppling this thing is extraordinary. So the celebrations continued, and then the crowd parted slightly, and I saw Thogden. This was my chance. Thoughts? Thoughts? Oh, football staying home, mate. The protest has made the difference. This is football history. If you're here today, we've made history. Oh, it doesn't matter if you're Chelsea, whatever fo football team you support, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Change history today. All the clubs are dropping out now. Unreal. Unreal. If you're here, you're a fucking legend. Fucking Cheers. legend. You hear that? Thogden just said I was a legend. I'll take that. Just like to say thanks to Thogden or Theo, whichever he prefers. I really rate that he came down and supported the protest but also allowing me to shove a camera in his face without even introducing myself or anything. He should have really told me to piss off and stop blatantly taking advantage of the situation and shamelessly trying to get him on the channel, but he didn't and gave me a great little clip. He clearly cares a lot about football and shows that while I've given Chelsea fans loads of credit, there was plenty of supporters of other clubs there too, which I massively respect. So as the fans celebrated, the Super League began to fall. One by one, the clubs began to pull out and the walls of this evil organisation began to crumble. It was incredible, a truly amazing moment, one of the great... Hold on, is that Rory Jennings? It is, that's the guy who steals all my views. If you search this channel name into YouTube, he comes up. He is currently fulfilling my dream of being the best known Rory in the football YouTube space. Right, well, considering I've already snuck Thogden into, into this video, your name is going straight in the title, Rory, mate. That's a couple extra clicks for sure. So the crowd moved to Fulham Broadway Station to celebrate, and it was around this time Ed Woodward resigned at Manchester United, which is just ridiculous. United fans have wanted rid of him for years, and now it's finally happened. Once the police decided to move us on, we eventually headed home. I know that the collapse of the Super League was not a complete or even direct result of the protest, but it's much more fun to believe it was, and that's in the spirit of football narrative, emotion and fantasy over facts every single time. I think what we learnt this week is you can make a difference if you want. What's important to you can be governed by you and you must stop any outsider from taking it away. That you can put rivalries aside for the greater good and the little people really can win. I think this needs to be a springboard for, to change the game for the better. Let's go after the new Champions League reforms. Let's get rid of VAR. Let's stop television companies changing kickoff times at the last minute. This is our time, it's going to be a tough battle, but we've got a grip on the sport again and we can't let it go. That's all for this video, thank you for watching, thanks to everyone involved in the protest, and I'll see you all again soon, in a bit. We're gonna play football